Well hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going back onto the Atlas 7B Shaper restoration project which we've not touched for a good few weeks now. So in this video we're going to look specifically at the oil drip tray that goes at the back of the ram and also the cross feed drive mechanism that basically alters the amount of cross feed that you've got on the table when it's in cross feed mode. So two of the last key bits that are going to be painted orange or two of the last bits that are painted orange that's it for the orange paint thankfully when we get to the end of that because the orange paint is a bit of a nightmare to apply so be pleased to get both of those done and get the that's the last of the real mechanical parts of the shaper finished at that point the rest of it is pulleys drive pulleys guards that kind of thing so getting towards the end of the actual restoration now so I want to get a final push on with that and see if we can get that complete so without any more babbling I'll bring you in at the bench just shortly show you the two bits we're concerned with and then we'll get stuck right into it and crack on with the sort of stripped down clean rebuild and repaint activity okay so these are the two bits and pieces so this is the casting and the gear set that basically control the cross feed mechanism so this gear assembly and this cam adjuster here this sort of linear slide is what controls the amount of movement you've got on each revolution of the machine and then these two linkage arms connect up to the cross feed slide itself the ratchet mechanism that controls the direction there's a lock nut which is for locking up the control of the length of stroke and then we've got the drip tray itself which is exactly what it says it is this sits behind the ram and as the ram moves backwards and forwards any oil that gets brought with it and drips drips into this drip tray so aluminium casting well, all aluminium castings and then obviously the steel work on the gears so what I'm going to do next is just start attacking the paint for a start so we'll get all this old nasty grey flaky paint off it's no different to any of the rest of the machine every time you touch it it's just flaking off and going back to the green so we'll get all of that done we'll get the paint off this bit as well and then probably at that point I'll bring you back as we start to clean up the various bits and pieces of the mechanism. Okay, we've got our three aluminium castings prepped, ready for paint. So we've degreased, got the paint off, degreased and masked up where I need to mask up. So there's a few little bits of primer left here and there but they're really well adhered to the aluminium so I'm not going to take it off and the underside of this tray has got a completely different primer on it from anything else I've spotted on the machine so far so I'm leaving that on because it's well it's well stuck on so I'm going to give these a final wipe over I'm just seeing one or two bits and bobs so a final wipe over with a degreasing rag and then we'll get our primer put on there you guys don't want to watch me rubbing things down with emery cloth and painting with a paintbrush it's not the most exciting viewing in the world so I'll get that done and then we'll move on to the orange and again I'm not going to film that it's just painting and there'll be one coat of primer at least three coats of orange if not four coats to get these to the same standard as the rest of the machine and whilst that's drying I'm going to move on to the other bits and pieces that came out of this assembly and I'll film some of that as we're cleaning those up. So that's got our primer coat done on the three bits and I'm now going to move on to the orange and once I've got the first coat of that on I'm then going to be picking up on these other bits and bobs that come out of the assembly to start cleaning those up. Okay we've got our orange bits orange which is great news because that's the end of the orange paint now so everything else is going to be the dark grey so the belt guards and the next bits that I'm going to move on to after this so we've got our masking off 
we've cleaned everything back up so these are all ready for reassembly and I'm just moving on to the small parts now so this is the locking what you want to call it screw I don't know locking it's probably got a proper name but I don't know what it is but anyway this locks the length of stroke action and it always it didn't really feel like it was working that well when I first got the machine but of course everything was gummed up so we've cleaned that up there was quite some rust on that I've not done it on a machine I've just done it with a bit of scotch bright just by hand so I'm happy with all of it apart from this knurl on the outside and I don't know whether the camera will pick this up because it's quite a fine knurl but somebody at some point in this machine or this part sorry history has decided that a pair of mole grips or pipe grips would be a a fantastic way of turning this and they've chewed in a couple you know, two or three places they've they've really chewed the knurl up so and there's some quite some corrosion in there. I, I did think about turning this off and trying to re knurl it but this is quite hard. It's not rock hard but it's quite hard and I know my cheap Chinese knurling tool would just really struggle with that so I'm not going to attempt that but what I am going to do we'll stick it in the vise and we're just going to get a wire wheel on here and just see if we can clean some of this corrosion out the out the nose. I don't know whether that's made it better or worse. <laughs> it's cleaned the corrosion out, but it's made the it's made the bits where the previous owner or somebody at some time thought that would be a good idea look even worse, I guess, but or even more visible. But anyway, it is what it is. I'm not going to do anything with that. We'll leave that as it is. I can get a good grip on that nail. So that's that part finished off. So we're now going to move on to the final bits in the assembly which are the gear and sliding mechanism that control the cross feed so I'll bring you back when we're cleaning those up okay I've cleaned these bits up off camera you know there's only so much wiping grease and muck off or you know oily things that you can watch so I'm not filming any of this but largely there's a spacer ring or a threaded, a threaded uh, ring there and one of the gears which we've cleaned up and the gear's not in too bad condition there's a couple of couple of teeth that have got a couple of tiny chips out of them but largely in pretty good condition I've also cleaned this ring up and I've got to say of all the bits on this shaper that I've stripped this was possibly the worst manufactured now whether this has been remanufactured by somebody or whether it's just the original that's been abused over time I really don't know or badly made in the first place but sharp edges everywhere on the corners you know all in the back of the counter sinks here were all sharp edges and the counter sinks themselves were pretty rough I've got to be honest so we've just given that a bit of a once over taken all the sharp edges off it and cleaned it up again nothing too special or worth filming and then the screws that hold those into position we've just given them a bit of a clean because they're all chewed up in the screwdriver slot so a bit of work with a file just to clean them up so I'm going to move on to the final bit of the assembly now which is the actual feed mechanism itself which is this bit so I zip tied all of this together when I stripped it almost a year ago to keep the right bushes and bits and pieces in the right place on the right arm so we're going to strip that down now and just clean this basically just it's a t-slot with a t-nut we'll give that a quick clean clean the gear get all the muck off it and 
make sure everything's as good as it can be ready to reassemble so again you know it's not, it's not very exciting watching me clean that up there's nothing really to see I'll bring you back when I've done it and then we can then focus on reassembling all of the bits that we've got in this episode okay it's reassembly time so we've got our key I think this is the key that came out of here it's truncated at the front end presumably because of this thread so we'll just pop that in and level it up next on is our back plate which should bit of oil won't do any harm and this should just sit on here like that next up is the gear itself which can only go on in one position because it's keyed it's got a keyway in it that locates on that key that we've just put in that's our gear just make sure everything's still moving yes it is next up is take the gear back off because like an idiot we've put that on in the wrong order I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, shall we try again? So that bit goes on. Next is this bit. There we go. Total tool abuse using my best paint stirrer for putting screws in. Shocking. Right, let's have another go. That's got our gear on. Next comes this locking ring. Okay. And next I think I think I'm okay to put this on next or am I? No, we'll put that on later. I think we're gonna go for the bottom the bottom unit first.
Yes, we'll go for that first. It's been so long since I stripped this. It's getting on for nearly a year since I took all this to bits. When the machine first arrived, so I have slightly lost my memories of how this came apart. Now here comes the exciting bit. Because I didn't pay any attention at all when I stripped this to the timing of this bottom sort of cam or eccentric if you like and this top gear I lost the reference what I should have done when I stripped it if I'd have realised was mark the top gear mark the bottom one so I could get them both back on in the same place so I've now got a little bit of trial and error to do to try and figure out which is the right position for this bottom eccentric to sit against this gear to be timed correctly with the ram movement so that I'm advancing my cross feed when the ram's on its return stroke and not when the ram's on its forward and cutting stroke. So I'm going to switch the camera off for a little bit and have a bit of a play around with this. Interestingly it's got a, a, two L's and two R's stamped on it for left and right here which I'm presuming coordinates with the left and right that's stamped onto the ratchet unit in some way or another but whatever that way is I don't yet know. So I'm going to switch the camera off for a bit, I'll have a bit of a play with this and I'll bring you back once I've figured it out and I'll explain how I figured it out just in case anybody else is doing the same thing. Okay with a bit of trial and error I think we've got this right. So I've added both, I've put both these arms back on with the bushes and everything and I've got that tight so I'm just going to crank this over by hand now and if you watch the the axis feed, the end of the lead screw here, I've left the handle on it so you can see that turning, keep your eye on the ram and what you should see is as we move forward on the cut stroke you can hear the ratchet clicking and then I'm right at the front of stroke there, that's the maximum and then as we move backwards on the back stroke we advance the feed and then forward again you'll hear the ratchet as we move forward on the cut, back on the back stroke with the, with the advance of cut and forward again. So I think I think we've got that right and Rusty if you're watching or anybody else who's got good shape and knowledge or Dean who's got an Atlas 7B and others who've got one let me know if you think this is correct. As you know I'm a complete newbie. That seems correct to me and I've got that working both ways in the same in the same way. Now this ratchet mechanism thing here is not particularly brilliant. It's a little bit it's a little bit grabby in the neutral position in the middle. It does eventually find a quiet spot but it it's very yeah I don't like it So there's the neutral spot but it's all a little bit fiddly. But either way I think we've uh, I think we've got that right. So we've clearly 
I've clearly not got it right because when I've got it on the opposite side it's now advancing the feed <laughs> on the cut and ratcheting on the backstroke. Let's just swap that back over. Ratcheting on the forward stroke, advancing on the backstroke. Advance cut on the back stroke, ratchet on the forward stroke, that seems correct. If I switch over to the opposite hand, which is now the right hand, that's maybe what this left and right's for then. Surely you don't have to alter this every time you change the direction of the table. Because that seems really silly if that's the case. Let's just test that. We'll put that to the opposite end of the... where it says right on that end. Just tighten that back up. Try that again. Advancing a cut on the forward stroke. It's actually advancing, it's just winding the handle for some reason. Ratcheting on the forward stroke, advancing on the back stroke, ratcheting on the forward stroke, so that's correct. That seems to be working in both directions but it means when you change direction of the table you also need to change direction of the eccentric or the cam here which seems bonkers but as I've said I'm a shaper newbie that probably explains why it says left and right on it if anybody knows please tell me because this is a this is a learning curve so I think I think it's right I'm gonna assume it's right We'll get the front cover case on, it's only two screws, not the end of the world if I need to take it off again. And I will then get my oil tray fitted at the back. And that will probably be it for this episode. But whilst this episode doesn't seem like much, probably for you guys to watch, because there's just been lots of cleaning and painting and you didn't see much of that. This is the important bit for me, because this is where I'm asking the community what the hell I'm doing, because I don't know. Okay, so, and it's far easier for you guys who know what you're doing to just tell me than me spend hours and hours on the internet trying to research millions of different people's opinions of what this should be. So I'll crack on, I'll get the front cover put on next, and I'll bring you back when we're putting the oil drip tray on the back underneath the ram. I think okay now for something hopefully much easier <laughs> he says <laughs> come on John It's been a long Friday. In fact, it's been a long week. Now, this may need to come back off when I start fitting all of the um, lay shaft and motor mount and whatnot. But for now, We'll get it onto the machine because while it's on there, it's not kicking around on my bench, taking space up. And it's also 
less likely to get damaged and have the paint scratched off it. Now I've spent the time and effort painting it up. So with the bits of luck, everything still moves without anything catching. I think I'll put that down as the easiest part of the restoration so far. I enjoyed that bit. So I'll bring you back to the board, we'll close this episode out and when we come back on the shaper we'll either be fixing everything that I've just done with this feed mechanism because I got it wrong or we'll be moving on to the pulleys that I need to fit and probably the, yeah, the pulleys, belt mechanism and the lay shaft across the back and the guards there really next up. So. I'll just bring you back to the board and we'll close this one out. Well there we go, that was fun, <laughs> I think. So at least we've got a few more bits, certainly painted, cleaned up, painted and back on the shaper and I think it's kind of right, not totally sure, not happy with that feed ratchet mechanism thing that just feels a bit, yeah I don't really, it's not very, not very good so I think at some point we'll be stripping that back down again and just trying to understand why I can't hit that neutral position very well with it. I don't know if that's a common thing on Atlas 7Bs. Again, if anybody knows, let me know please in the comments. Uh, as I say, this is first time for me not only with an Atlas 7B but also really anything to do with the shaper. As I keep saying, apart from one day back in 1988 when I played around with something about twice the size of this one in my apprenticeship. So all new to me, a complete newbie and a complete learning curve. But happy that when I try and, you know, with all the rebuild I've done, when I'm hand cranking the machine around, uh, it's all moving very smoothly, all feels very nice. So there's a couple of little bits we probably just need to tweak and tune as we go forward. So I hope you enjoyed that. As I said, more for me this one than for, for you guys probably I, I, asking for help and advice. So anything of that nature, greatly received. I've shown you the best I can how I've done it and how it's working. And yeah, it'd be good to get your comments and feedback. Uh, thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along to the channel. And we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else. <laughs>